I'm sitting in the best SUV ever made and you probably never even heard of it. Now, when you think of the best SUV ever made, you might go straight towards the Toyota 4Runner, the Jeep Wrangler, or even the V8 powered Mercedes G-Wagon. But you would be totally wrong because a new SUV was recently imported for sale in the USA that I think is better than all of them. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the best SUV that you can buy right now, as well as three other SUVs that are good to buy if you're on the market for something that fits the whole family, has four wheel drive, and also, looks really cool. Now the first SUV on this list is probably without a doubt the most reliable, but it's also the oldest and the most outdated. And that is the Toyota 4Runner. Now this style 4Runner has been out for a very long time, well over 10 years. And the reason this isn't on my list as like the best SUV you can buy right now is because there's a new one coming out really, really soon. Now just because it's not the best on this list doesn't mean it's the worst. It's actually really, really high as the top of the list. And that's because the 4Runner has a lot of good things going for it and a few things that I don't really like. And also because there is a new 4Runner coming out sometime at the end of this year, that means there's some really good deals on this outgoing 4Runner that I've seen at this dealership. Now I'm gonna start by showing you some of the lower priced ones and then how expensive one of these 4Runners can't get. And I wanna start by showing you this SR5 trim level because it's one of the cheapest ones that I have found on this lot and it gets pretty interesting. So the SR5 is pretty basic. There's no chrome trim or large wheels or aggressive tires or anything. It's just kind of basic. The same with this white SR5 over here. You do still get a roof rack on this one, a tow hitch and window tent. And when you step inside, that's where it kind of gets a little old and dated. And as you can see here, this interior has been pretty much relatively the same for the life of the 4Runner, including the steering wheel. They have made some changes over the years to slowly improve it. Things like adding a screen, improving the look of the gauge cluster, and also designing better switch gear as well over the last few years. But everything else pretty much has been the same for a very long time. And that makes it difficult to compete with a lot of the new vehicles that have come out recently, like the Ford Bronco. And if you're wondering how much an SR5 trim level is, let me show you. This is actually a 2024 model. It's four wheel drive SR5. And the price is $48,129. But because Toyota sales have been pretty slow lately, there's actually a really good discount all the way down to $42,846 for this. So that's saving you over $5,000 when you buy a brand new 2024 model, which I think is pretty cool. Now the trims on these do get quite a bit nicer, but also with that, the price goes up. And that's where this TRD Pro comes in. And usually these have been pretty hard to find on the lot, but I actually found two of them. One in this brand new color for 2024, and there's another way over there. So the TRD Pro does get a bit nicer. You have some more aggressive wheels, with all-terrain tires. You've got the side steps that make it easier to get in because it is a little bit higher than the SR5. You have a roof rack that can fit a lot more stuff on it because it is stronger and quite a bit larger. And when you step inside, the interior is mostly the same, but it's trimmed up a little bit fancier. You get red stitching on the leather around here and the leather goes all the way up the door as opposed to the SR5 being mostly plastic. You get these more aggressive rubber floor mats to keep the mud and dust off of your carpet. And then if you notice the entire switch gear in the middle of the dash is actually a lot nicer. Instead of a knob right here, like you saw on the other one, you get all of these switches because you get heated seats, defrost, and a lot more options when it comes to the navigation and infotainment center. The rest of the switch gear is pretty similar, but it does have this carbon fiber trim piece on here which I think looks really good. And also you get some fun stuff above the rear view mirror. So you've got the button to turn the trash control off. You've got additional buttons here that you can put your accessories on. You've got the garage door opener. You've got the sunroof buttons right here because this one does have a sunroof. And it also comes with the rear diff lock. And like the Bronco, it has a few different drive modes. You can see here where you can switch the drive modes. This looks more like desert and sand. This looks more like rock crawling here. So it just kind of fades over to, you know, whatever you're doing, depending on like light sand or hardcore rock crawling, which I think is pretty cool. But like I said, the TRD Pro does get pretty expensive. This is also a 2024 model in the new color called Terra, and this will run you $57,425. And if you look in the window, there is no discount. Most of the time, there's never any discounts on TRD Pros, so that pretty much goes with it. Now, like I said, there is a new 4Runner coming out soon, and I know in a few months it will be revealed, but until then, this is still not 
the best SUV you can buy right now. That's coming later in the video, but the next one I wanna show you is something that I also own. But before we go look at that next vehicle, I found something really cool that I've yet to see. This is a brand new 2024 Toyota Tacoma. And this is the first time I've actually ever seen one in person. And honestly, I do think it looks really good. This is the TRD off-road version of it. And like most TRD wheels, they're always black. And it has the new trail terrain from BF Goodrich. And as you can see, it is the new one. It has the new headlight these new vents underneath that are actually just fake vents but what's funny is the fenders actually have a real venting right down here and the front end does look really good and there's something that I thought was really cool but also really funny on the interior and that is this screen is really really <laughs> massive i think it's a cool upgrade to have the screens in here but this one is just insanely huge but sitting inside this is definitely an upgrade from the outgoing model the steering wheel actually still has kind of the same toyota design but it does look a little bit sharper and more modern it has charging stations for your phone the shifters are really nice all the electronics and controls are right here in the center of the dash you got two cup holders here and more modern looking controls for the air conditioning system right here and physical buttons still which are really nice and the seats they're not too bad either but i'll have to come back here to make another video specifically about this truck let me show you the next suv on this list now the next suv on this list doesn't suffer from some of the outdated things that the forerunner has and that is the jeep wrangler now obviously the wrangler has been around for basically just as long if not longer than the forerunner but over time the jeep has kept up with technology way way better and what i'm specifically talking about is the engines you see with the forerunner you only get one engine option and that engine has been around for a long time and it's very underpowered um granted it is super super reliable and probably lasts a trillion miles but nowadays People want a lot more power, especially if you're gonna be going off road or towing any kind of trailers or doing an overland build. The more you put on there, the heavier your vehicle gets, the slower that 4Runner is gonna be. But with Jeep, you actually get four freaking engine options. And some of the engines get really insane. This is a 2024 Rubicon with the Extreme Recon package, which gives you a little bit of lift over factory, still bumpers, a winch, 17 inch wheels with 35 inch tires, and these fender flares that look really, really cool. And this does have the first engine that is also the oldest Jeep engine that's been in these since the JK. And that is the 3.6 liter Pentastar V6. But it does have an HP transmission, which actually helps this old engines stay in the right rpms depending on where you go and that's the first engine option that you get on these now the second engine option that you get in jeep is also the engine that i have in my yellow jeep way over there and that is the two liter turbo four cylinder engine and i've driven both the v6 and the new four cylinder turbo in these jeeps and i prefer the turbo surprisingly i prefer the turbo i thought i would you know be stuck with the old v6 but the turbo motor has a lot more power especially when going up the mountain passes the V6 was sluggish and just tended to lose power and just kind of gassed out. But the two liter turbo spools up that boost and just pulls all the way up through those mountain passes. And the third engine option is a little bit interesting because it also makes these a lot more expensive. And that's this one here with the two liter turbo boosted by some batteries in the hybrid electric engine. And as you can see, it has a charging port right here that you open and can plug it in. But these tend to be quite pricey and we'll go over prices of each one of these in just a second. But the final option you get is, in my opinion, the best engine option that you can get. Now we're on four engine options, which is pretty crazy. And the third engine option is right behind me in this black Jeep Wrangler. That's the 392 V8 with more than enough horsepower, with more than enough horsepower and torque to crawl over anything. And while these Jeeps are really cool and they do serve a special purpose, they've always been a little bit more expensive. But the reason it's not the best SUV on this list, again, that's coming at the end of this video because the one on this list that you will see Again, you've probably never even heard of before, and I even got to drive it and give you a full tour, so stay tuned for that. But one of the reasons these are not the best one on this list, at least for right now in the beginning of 2024, is the prices have just gone insanely high. This white one we looked at with the Extreme Recon package and the V6 engine is $74,605. And this two liter turbo one we looked at is a little bit cheaper, but it doesn't have the Extreme Recon package, is $62,365. And this white one over here, which is basically a high trim level Sahara with the electric engines is $72,000. But they do have a few cheaper trim levels and I'll show you those in just a second because we still have to look at the price of the 2024 392 Rubicon. And this thing will run you a whopping 
$96,720. Now Jeep does have options that are not Rubicons, not hybrids, not 392s that do start a little bit cheaper like this Willys here, but it's a higher trim level Willys and I'll show you on the sticker. So this is a 2024. You can see the base price of this four door Willys starts at $36,595. But if you add all these options that you know make it more fancy, it can go as high as $55,245 for this, which does make it difficult to find like a super cheap sport model. Um, those do exist, but they're hard to find on lots because once they hit the lots, they're gone pretty quickly. But I would pick the Jeep over the 4Runner, and a lot of those reasons is its four-wheel drive capability, the engine options you get, and the new 2024 interior is actually really, really nice. So this one here is actually running and the screen is on, which makes it easier for me to show you. And as you can see here, the new screen is a lot bigger. They put the vents down underneath it and it just makes it look a little more modern and kind of fancy on the inside. But the interior is definitely nicer to set in and looks more modern than the outgoing 4Runner. Now, one quick sidebar about these Jeeps that I want you to know and think about is while these new ones, especially the Rubicons are like in the 60s, you can actually save some money by doing what I did. I bought this 2019 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon, pretty much fully loaded with every option that you could think of. And I actually ended up paying only $45,000 for it, and the Jeep only had 13,000 miles. So like this 2024 Rubicon, that's $68,830, you could buy a slightly used 2019, like I got right here for only 45. If you look in the right places, now mine only had 13,000 miles. So if you get one with a lot higher miles, you could probably save even more money. Let's hop in my Jeep and go look at the third vehicle on this list, and it's a bit controversial. Newer vehicles are pretty safe, but accidents do happen. When you're seriously hurt, your injury could be worth millions. Morgan & Morgan does not settle for lowball offers. Just in the past four months, Morgan & Morgan saw verdicts of $12 million in Florida, 34 times the highest insurance offer, $26 million in Philadelphia, 40 times the highest insurance offer, and $6.8 million in New York, 25 times the highest insurance offer. And the fee is absolutely free unless you win. Did you know that you can start a claim with America's largest injury law firm in just a click. It's so easy. You can start your claim with Morgan & Morgan now at forthepeople.com motor or just click the link in the description below. Now I said this next SUV on my list was controversial and that's because when they first came out you could barely get one and when you tried to get one most of them were marked up like 10, 15, even 20 grand over MSRP but not anymore and that vehicle is the Ford Bronco and as you can see behind me they now have a full row of brand new Ford Broncos that you pretty much have your pick of whatever trim level or color that you want now when you couldn't get that before which nothing comes close to it made by Toyota. And as you can see here, there's pretty much a good choice when it comes to options. Plus they have a Raptor version of it. And let's see where the lower trim level starts at and then we'll go all the way up to the Raptors there at the end. So this big bin trim level would be one of the more entry level options. And these two cheaper options are good to look at because this green one is a brand new 2024 and this gray one here is a 2022 that is slightly used. But let's look at this 2024 model first. This is a 2024 with the 2.3 liter EcoBoost engine and the 10 speed transmission in the Big Ben trim level, which is one of the lower trim levels that you can get. MSRP of this one is $46,300, but they actually do have a discount just like Toyota does. It's just not as much. So you can get a discount from the dealer of $1,055, bringing that 45 to 44,495, which is not a huge discount compared to Toyota, but you gotta understand Toyota has that 4Runner that's outgoing and they have to get rid of them because the new Ford Runner is coming out sometime this year. But then you have this used one here and the options are pretty close to the same. So you could save some money by getting a 22 for $38,995. About a $6,000 difference between this green one and the Solar 22 model and they're pretty much the same. Now let's check out one of these higher trim levels which is the one most people buy who are gonna do any kind of off-roading or camping or going on trails or anything like that. And that would be this Badlands right here. And they do have a few that you can choose from. There's a soft top version, and then these two here are hard tops, and there's more soft tops over here. But let's go ahead and look at this gray hard top real quick. And I'll try to do the best to show you this window sticker, but the tin is dark and the sun is in the right spot where my reflection just kind of blocks everything. But it's a 2024 Badlands four-door four-wheel drive 
This one does actually have the 2.7 liter EcoBoost V6. And again, they all have the 10 speed transmission. This is a pretty highly optioned one, which will run you $68,830 for this. But because they have so many now, you get $1,450 off bringing it to 67,380. But that's not even the most expensive Ford Bronco that they have here. And if you're in the market for a new Bronco and you're okay with paying uh, the ridiculously high prices that these Bronco command, this would be the trim level I think to get, especially if you're gonna keep it long-term because you do get 35 inch tires and it's a lot higher up than one of these lower trim levels right here. So it's a lot more capable if you're doing stuff more than just driving a Costco. But that's not the most expensive Bronco that you can buy. That would be the Bronco Raptor. And these were also hard to find for a while but they have one, two, three that I can see just right here. And there's one thing that's interesting about these. When they first came out, you could only get them with the black fenders, but I think Ford actually listened to their customers this time because this trim level here, as you can see, the paint is matching the actual body color of this Bronco Raptor, which I think makes it look even better and honestly more premium. So I'm curious to see the difference in price between one with black fenders and this one here with the painted fenders. Let's take a look. So this is actually a 2023 model. And of course it's got the three liter EcoBoost V6 that all the other Raptors like the F-150 get as well. But this will run you $95,705. And it's pretty much got every option you could think of except for the painted fenders like that other one there. And I'm pretty sure that's probably gonna be a 24 model. But the interesting thing about this Raptor is there's no more markup on this either. It's not a huge discount, but you can get $3,710 off, bringing it to $91,995. And just being able to see Broncos with discounts and especially Bronco Raptors with discounts, um, really shows you that there has been a shift in the market and buying has slowed down. And you know, these are so expensive, but if you have deep pockets to get these, you might as well snag them if you can negotiate to get a good interest rate, obviously. But let's look at the pricing difference of this 2024 model with the painted fenders. Everything else is pretty much the same. The biggest difference is these painted fenders right here. And it looks like they did leave this section here that you can replace. And the MSRP of this 2024 is higher than that other one. It's $96,150. But there is one thing with the pricing on this one uh, that actually doesn't surprise me because it's a 2024. This one does have a dealer markup. It's not like 15 or 20 grand like the craziness that was before. It's actually a nice mild markup of $29.95. So about three grand over MSRP. And look, anything over MSRP kind of sucks. But when they used to go for 10, 15, 20, over three grand's not a big deal um, because I bet if you bought this one, you could probably negotiate that off of there. But the Raptor R does look cool with the 37s, these crazy fender flares, and this insane suspension that you can see here. But now it's time to get to what I think is the best SUV that you could buy right now. And of course, you probably never heard of it. So, so we've looked at the Toyota 4Runner, the Jeep Wrangler, these Ford Broncos, and the next one I think might actually surprise you for my best pick. And it's this, the Ineos Grenadier, and it's one of the coolest SUVs to come out probably in the last decade. Now you probably haven't heard much about this because it's a small company and they're just moving over here to the United States. They've been here for a few months now, but they are selling a lot of them. And instead of me giving you a tour of this thing because I only know small bits about it, I'm here with Jake who works and sells these at Lyle Pearson, and he's gonna tell you a little bit more about it. So Jay's gonna talk about everything cool about this Ineos Grenadier, why it's here in the first place, how much it costs, what are all the features, accessories you can get for this amazing four-wheel drive vehicle, and then you'll see why I think this is the best four-wheel drive SUV to come out in the last few years. All right, I'm Jake with Lyle Pearson, and this is the Ineos Grenadier. What we have here is the Trial Master uh, in Magic Mushroom is the color. Trial Master is sort of the off-road version of the Grenadier. Along with that, you get the steel wheels, you get the KO2 tires, you get things like auxiliary battery, raised air intake. You're gonna get power up on the roof for your accessories like the Rhino Rack uh, light bar up there. Lots of really great options. So from there, you can keep going with things like rock sliders, utility railing on the door. So these are for your camp kitchen, your fuel, your roto packs, whatever you want on there. You can option out the front with a winch right from the factory, which is great. And then probably most importantly for a four wheel drive is the differential lockers. So front, rear and center, triple locked. 
uh, right from the factory is an option and standard on the trial master. So up here on the roof, we have the optional full roof rack, which is a really great option. Allows you to add things like the light bar, the max tracks. One other really unique feature about the Grenadier is gonna be the power. So you can option it with power up on the roof. So you wanna just plug that connector right in plug in your rooftop tent, whatever you want, it's right there ready to go. You can also run all the 12 volts off the auxiliary battery. So you shut the car off, take the key out, and you can still have power for uh, your lights, whatever you need. Uh, around back, we have our widow <laughs> Around back, we have our ladder for getting up on the roof rack as well as our full-size spare tire. Uh, you can option out a cargo uh, storage unit in the back tire, which is really useful. Back here, we have the 70-30 split. So if you want quick access, you get in the 30 door, or if you need full access, you get into the whole thing. Optional on this one is the tailgate table, which hangs off your large door. Gives you a nice, uh, nice space for camping, cooking, as well as a molly panel there to add different accessories. The Grenadier uh, comes optional with the trailer hitch, which will tow 7,716 pounds. Uh, you can also option it with a uh, full NATO uh, plug out back as well to power up different accessories like a rear winch, which you could option right from the factory as well. So interior on this Grenadier is the uh, utility interior, which gives you the cloth and vinyl mix. You can also option uh, heated seats and then beyond that leather in both black and gray and black two-tone. Uh, interior on the Grenadier is uh, standard with Recaro seats, both front and rear. And then just for the sake of simplicity and just to keep things reliable, um, manual seats front and rear, which is great. Powering the Grenadier is the BMW B58 inline turbo straight six engine. So this engine is used in a lot of BMW uh, power plants as well as the X5, pretty much anything in the lineup with a 40 at the end, as well as the Toyota Supra. So this engine went through all of Toyota's durability and reliability testing. Behind this engine is the ZF8 speed, which is uh, again, a super reliable transmission. So on the front of the Grenadier, not only do you have LED headlights, but you also have off-road lights in the grill. And then this Grenadier is optioned with the front winch. So this is a red winch. Uh, it's five and a half metric tons, which is just over 12,000 pounds, right from the factory, which is really great for uh, just ready to go overlander or off-roader. So that's pretty much a general overview, but now I wanna show you a few things that I specifically like about it. And one of the first things is how easy it is to accessorize this, especially when it comes to the roof rack, these rails on the side, and you have little mounts on the side of the doors here to put any kind of accessories. Also, it'd be nice for filming because I could just hook GoPros easily all around this thing without having to worry about suction cups or anything letting go because a lot of times when you suction cup to the body of a car, uh, they do fly off and you lose cameras. There's also a company out there, I think it's Eibach that's working on a lift to where you can easily fit 35s on here. It's like an inch or two. And some other things I like are on the interior. Let me show you. The first one's not really an interior, but it's this. You hear how solid that door shut is? That reminds me of opening and shutting the door on like a classic 911. When you open it, you can just hear the quality. And then in here in the cabin, there's a few things in here that I like. Oh yeah, hear that solid clunk with no rattles, by the way. So in the cabin, you have a commanding presence over the road. You can see everything. You can see out the back really easily. You can see out this side really easily. And the cool thing about the interior is you don't have a big gauge cluster in a way. You have this little cluster here and a screen on this side. And it's not too tall either. This is just the perfect size, I think. And here's something that I think is kind of fun as well. You have a normal horn, but you also have this little button that says toot and it has a bicycle. And so that toot horn is to alert anyone on like bicycles or kids in the neighborhood or even people that are just not paying attention without actually scaring them. And on the inside, you have all these big chunky buttons. You have a hazard button that's shielded by these metal side pieces. Everything just is pretty much serious and you have everything you need and nothing you don't. And there's also something cool above your head. They opted to put a lot of the accessory buttons overhead, which kind of makes it feel a little bit like a military, like Humvee or fighter jet cockpit, which I think is really cool. You have your 
ESC, traction control off, you have hill descent control, you have your front and rear differential lockers that you can do separately, and you have your off-road modes up here. So if you're looking for the best full-wheel drive SUV that you can buy in 2024, I highly recommend checking out the Enios Grenadier. Subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.